Greetings, fellow interlopers. It's Taylor. And yeah, you're not hallucinating. This is actually new content I just put out. So let's discuss how to use the coordinate exchange to get any living ship that you see. If you're patient enough to go through this whole process, your patience will be rewarded with a truly unique ship that's unlike any other in the game. But how unique is it really? If you take a look at other living ships, many seem to be similar in color as well as build, but you know, it doesn't have to be that way. So whether you're going after your first living ship or your 10th, if you're wondering how to get a specific style or color, you're in the right spot. If you've already got a living ship and are here for more of the process of using the coordinate exchange to get a specific living ship, then you'll probably want to skip ahead. There's a time code on the video, so just look for the using the NMSCE on the timeline. For everyone else, I'll just do a quick overview on how to get your first living ship. The process has remained somewhat unchanged. Before we jump in though, make sure and have the first 12 glyphs. Near the end of this process, you'll need to enter a portal code, which uses the first 12 glyphs. Besides these glyphs, you're also going to need a void egg. And if it's your very first ship, you'll just need the void egg and the glyphs. But if you already have your initial living ship, all subsequent living ships will need a void egg and 10,000 nanites. Void eggs can be obtained a couple ways. The first is just to buy it with Quicksilver, and it'll cost you 3,200. It's far and away the most expensive thing you'll buy. It may seem like a lot, but the recent buff to weekend mission rewards as well as daily mission rewards, you will actually be there in no time. The second method is my favorite, have someone just give it to you. That's kind of a no-brainer, right? Nearly every time I'm in a forum about living ships, I always hear how they were just hanging around the anomaly and someone just randomly gifted them a void egg, which it's a pretty sweet deal. But if you are fortunate enough to get an egg from a traveler, please keep this in mind because it throws a lot of people. Make sure that it only says void egg. It should not have any descriptors on it yet, like cracking void egg or active void egg or anything like that. If it has a descriptor in the name, it means the process was already started by that traveler and it's dead to you. You can't use a void egg from someone else once they've already started the process. So just save your time and just trash it if it says cracking void egg or something similar. Once you have your void egg, just take off anywhere and start pulsing. Before too long, you'll get a message notification and some dialogue will start with a living ship and the star birth mission will begin. Just follow the Void Egg mission markers on your next location. These will have you go to a nearby system to build a living ship component. If for any reason you're not getting any markers to pop up, go into your mission logs and click on another mission and then click back to your Star Birth mission. More times than not, this will help reset which markers you're seeing. As long as you have the Void Egg icon somewhere on your screen, you'll be good to go. As mentioned earlier, you'll need to craft certain items in order to make the four components which make up a living ship. You'll craft a consciousness bridge to get a neural stem, a pulsating core for the heart, an impossible membrane for the shell, and finally you'll need seeds of glass to make a singularity core, which kind of just ties all those together. If you happen to be a member of PETA, you might want to keep this next part to yourself. You'll need to put down a few creatures with new tech you receive called the Animus Beam. This beam converts animals into fragmented qualia, which is one of the ingredients for the seeds of glass. FYI, I recommend finding ugly or hostile animals for this one. Hey, I was just defending myself. The good news is that each of these components are pretty easy to obtain. Just follow the mission icon and any instructions that pop up on the bottom right corner of the screen. That's really it. The bad news? Uh, well, each one takes like 23 hours to mature, so I know that's a long time. You know, I did hear a dirty little rumor that you could adjust your system clock, either on your PC or console, and this could speed the process up. I don't know, just a rumor. Once your singularity core has matured, the next time you pulse, you'll have another interaction with a living ship which basically tells you to check your void egg in your inventory. Sure enough, it tells you the portal address of where to go. 
and leaving nothing to chance, you're also told which galaxy to be in. Three times. If you're struggling on deciphering which symbols are which, here's the full address on what to put in. And as I mentioned earlier, you'll just need the first 12. After you go through the portal, this never-ending quest directs you to an abandoned building and gives you a soul chamber. This chamber needs to be filled with three souls. Once filled, head back through the portal, which is highlighted, so you can find it easily. Once you enter the portal and come out, you'll hop into your ship and have a little dialogue to move through. Here's the important part. After this dialogue, make sure to select Disconnect Communicator. This will now allow you to exit your ship and make a restore point. Or if you just want to use a save point or save beacon and save before you hop into your ship, you can do that too. The main thing is just to make sure and save before you hatch your egg. Follow the coordinates until you come across your living ship. This is where the save comes in. If you don't like this ship, reload your restore point. Once you've loaded back in, just ignore all the communication attempts and jump to another system. Now once you're in that system, you can hatch your egg and decide if you like the new living ship or not. Just rinse repeat until you're happy with your new friend. For a more detailed breakdown on how to upgrade your living ship, I'll leave a link to this video at the end. Every crashed ship in the game actually has a living ship variant. Fortunately, these have been historically consistent, meaning that when someone comes across a living ship with certain traits, they can post it to the coordinate exchange and give everyone an opportunity for the exact same one. So there's a few ways to browse the coordinate exchange, like nmsce.com, or you can use their app. My personal favorite is just to go to their subreddit. Here, you can put in specifics if you happen to know what characteristics you're after or you can just search living ships and see what pops out at you. Before we get too far into it, here's a couple things to keep in mind. For every living ship you want, you'll need a void egg as well as 3300 nanites. And most of you probably know, but as is the case anytime you're ship hunting, make sure and disable multiplayer. With those out of the way, we'll go through an example here on the coordinate exchange. Let's see, yeah, this one looks good. All you need are the glyphs and which galaxy it's in, which you'll find in the flare of the post. Looks like this is Hyades, which is Galaxy 5. Don't sweat it if you only have bases in Euclid. The large majority of things that everybody posts are from Euclid. But if you are curious about how to get to Hyades, you can always refer to my How to Switch Galaxies video. As a reminder to the newer players out there, you can only portal from within the galaxy you're in. For example, you can't enter glyphs for a base in Isentom from a portal in Euclid. I mean, you can, but you'll end up in Euclid somewhere. So let's enter these glyphs in and we'll try to chase down this living ship. So after you arrive in the system, you'll want to find the site of your living ship and just make a base somewhere nearby. This is just for the purposes of getting the ship, so I'll delete mine after. Once you have the base set up, this next part is pretty important. You'll now head to another part of the system, or some actually use a different galaxy, and you're gonna hatch your egg. Don't do it here. Once you get to your hatch location, you can now start the Starbirth mission by pulsing. The mission should activate if you have a void egg in your possession. This can be a little finicky sometimes, so if you've been pulsing for a while, try switching around your missions and your logs or restarting the game to get this going. Once the living ship comes out and you start the Starbirth mission, you'll then wanna go back to that location where you just built your base. This is the place that you found on the exchange. Once there, go into your log and hopefully you'll see the option to restart the mission. If you don't, then you didn't travel far enough away. Once you restart the mission, your living ship should now be waiting for you. All that's left is to burn your hard-earned nanites and she's all yours. It is possible that you get a different ship other than the one you want, so if this happens, you can reject this host, get your egg back, and go through the process of going far away, starting the mission, and then portaling back to reset the mission. The rest is the same process. One other thing that you might encounter is seeing a normal ship instead of your living ship. This is actually really common. If this happens to you, just make a save and reload your restore point, and your living ship should now be there. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and it helps you in your quest for a cool living ship. 
As always, a like and a sub goes a long way in showing your appreciation. Thanks so much for watching, guys. This is Taylor with Whiskey Barrel Gaming. Have an S-Class day, everybody.